God's love for you is the most beautiful, powerful thing in this world. And it could never be broken. And it's so strong that there's nothing that you could ever do to make God love you any less. And there's no, more, there's no try hard or do better that you could ever do to make him love you any more. And so the answer to that question, who is Jesus to you? When you say he's my vine, what that means is he is the source of my very being. He is my life. His spirit and his life is flowing through me. Yes, he's the Messiah. Yes, he's the son of God. Yes, he died on the cross. But he is my source of life right here, right now, today, every second, every moment of every day. There was a time during 2020, the year we'd all like to forget, when I was reading John 15 every single day. And I read it every single day, and one day I was reading it, and I felt God ask me a question. And he, this is where this sermon comes from. He asked me this question, Matt, who's Jesus to you? I was reading John 15, the, the thing we're looking at. And I said to God, he is the Messiah, the son of the living God. Because I thought that's what I was supposed to say. And God said to me gently, Matt, I'm not talking about the you that stands on the stage. I'm not talking about the you that, sta that stands in the baptistry. I'm not talking about you in the classroom. I'm talking about you and me right now in this room where nobody else can see. Who is Jesus to you? And if we want a fresh encounter, we need to answer that question today, tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. Is he your vine which supplies your very life? So number one, who, who is Jesus asking? Number two, who do we say that we are? And you say, Matt, don't you mean um, who does Jesus say I am? No, he's, he says it. He says you're the brand. He knows who you are. I mean, who do you say you are? Who do we say we are? Jesus doesn't say in this passage, I just want you to look real close. He doesn't say, this is an emphatic in the, in the language. He doesn't say that you might be the branch. You are a branch. I'm the vine, you're the branch. He doesn't say you could be the branch if you just do enough. He says you are the branch on your best day and your worst day and every day in between. You are the branch. That's the being side of it. That's your identity. That is who you are. Uh, I'm a, a huge Chicago Cubs fan. A any Chicago Cubs fan in the room? All right, two of you. That's awesome. All right. Um, anybody ever heard Harry Carey before on the, the call, Harry Carey? And if you're like, I don't know who that is, just listen he, he has this famous home run call, okay? So when somebody from the Cubs hit a home run, he gets so excited, and he's, he's passed away. But, uh, you know, back when I watched every day on WGN, uh, they, he'd, the guy had hit a, what looked like it was going to be a home run, and he'd say, there's a drive way back. It might be. It could be. And then what do you say? It is a home run. And then what is it? Holy cow. You remember that? Man, what in the world? What's wrong with you guys? You, you never... <laughs> well, anyway, just trust me. That's what happened, okay? He... Holy cow, all right? You ever heard holy cow before? You've heard holy cow. 
That came from Harry Carey. Anyway, um, holy cow. But sometimes, um, when he had a little bit too much Budweiser in him, because uh, it was a well-known thing that he would drink while he called the things, which is why he messed up so much, um, he would, they'd hit the ball, and it's like a high fly ball that's going to be an out, like everybody else knew it, but not Harry. He would say, there's a drive, way back. And on the TV, you don't know. Like, you think, oh, that must be a better hit than I think. There it goes, you know. And it might be, or maybe the wind's blowing, right? It could be. Oh, it's just short. He's an out. And, like, sometimes it's the ninth inning, and, like, a home run would win the game, but an out's going to lose the game. And you start celebrating, like, you're up, and the nachos fly, and you're like, ah, you know. And then all of a sudden he catches it, you're like, come on, man. Don't do that to me. My heart can't take it, right? I think sometimes we live our lives as though God is maybe mistaken. And he might be saying, you might be. You could be. Ah, you're not. Uh, (laughs) Sorry. But really, Jesus is saying, not you might be, not you could be, but you are. His branch. And he's the vine. And I think sometimes we need to throw a little holy cow in there. And be like, holy cow. Like just, I I want you to stop for a minute. Pretend like you've never heard this before. And think to yourself, I am in Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe. I'm the branch. He's the vine. And he says, he will produce fruit through me. The stuff that I'm... The, thing, the very thing he created me to do, that if I remain in him, holy cow. Holy cow. God in us. In us. In God. And I don't have to try harder or do better to make it true. I just have to remain. As a matter of fact, as I try harder to do better, I, I'm remaining in me rather than remaining in him. Everybody take a deep breath with me, okay? We're good. If we're in him, we're good. We're good. And this realization will change your life forever.